Swings Louder. What's up, guys? It's uh, a new day, and we are back at the shop. And uh, I just got done riding some wheelies on this guy, and I, I actually got me a decent, uh, decent little second gear ones going. So. For uh, part of me, I almost wish this thing was automatic because I'm not even using the clutch to really like pop it up anymore. I just kind of, you know, kind of bounce and throttle it in and do a little weight transfer. And I feel like almost for drift events that this thing's going to be kind of a pain in the butt with the clutch because you, you can't just pull up to a stop and, um, and let it chill there. You, you have to use a clutch. So if I like load, like if I want to just carry like wheels and tires on like my arms and ride with my knee, I can't do that. But uh, Dave, what are you doing? What did what is this thing? Hey. What is it? Turbo BMW. Dude, you have to look at the valves. Are they brand new? Yeah. Yeah, this engine looks like it never ran. Oh yeah. They're like I wonder if it's built. I'm not sure if it is built. It kinda looks like it ran a little bit because you can see a little bit of carbon right there. Yeah. But Yeah, shit. You might have got a built. A belt thing. So David went to the auction. So the same auction that I got that KTM for, like a week and a half ago or two weeks ago. Or was that last week? It was last week. No, it's every two weeks I think they have that auction. Oh, yeah. But anyhow, this is what, a 97? Yeah, 97. 328i convertible. And you would have never really known. That it actually had good parts on it. Well, you knew exactly it had good parts on it because what did you first see? Well, I saw the ball felt, but I didn't think the turbo was legit or anything else was. I just thought it was like an eBay. Where's like, the ball felt at? Sitting on Jay-Z. Oh, because you're going to rob it for that. No, I have an electric ball felt for that. Oh. I on it yeah, so I didn't go with Dave to this auction, but he popped the hood and he seen that. Going to the intake manifold. And uh, he got it back here. So I guess there's some issues with like the paperwork on this thing. And th there's no title, right? Um, the guy said I probably could get a tile if I filed for it, but I mean, I'm probably not going to file for one because, you know, so I don't know. Yeah, you might. But anyhow, it didn't have a key, didn't have like yep. title, but it had like bill of sale paper. Well, actually it had a plastic key. I found a key after I destroyed the ignition, kind of. Yeah, trying to get it going. Um, there's like a plastic key that was stuck in this thing. And then now it like actually turns the ignition and everything. Yeah. But, so you like pull the ignition out. It's a super weird setup. So. If, uh, if you look from right here, you're like, oh, that's just a header. And then you look down there, there's like a turbo attached to it. And it's pretty crazy because it's actually uh, like a Garrett. It looks like a 2871. And it literally looks brand new. Like, I mean, minus it sitting under a car for a free few months, it's brand new. Oh, yeah. yeah. So anyhow, pretty, uh, pretty interesting setup with this. Um, I don't know. And now he pull, pulling off the intake manifold. Looking like the, the head is almost brand new. And because I wasn't sure if the engine was any good. Yeah. And it's, yeah. A, it's a manual too. It's a five-speed manual. It has like 176K on it. Um, and then it has this ECU. And it's on the bottom of it, it says Active Auto Works. So it's probably a tuned ECU. It has aftermarket injectors right there. And yeah, it's supposed to be 525s. And then it had, look at this rat's nest. So Dave came down here last night. I wasn't down here. But yeah, look at this insane mess of wiring that was on it. And then it had nitrous on it. But then it also, what, what was the other weird thing? It had like this carbon dioxide tank going to the throttle body. Or maybe that's oxygen. Or is that, is that CO2? Yeah, carbon dioxide. Yeah, weird. So it had this going to another nitrous solenoid going into the intake manifold. Yeah, which was basically plumbed into this. No, it went into the throttle body. It was off that, <coughs> that one... One solenoid right here, that one, that random one. Yeah. It went right into the, the Look at that, it has a three bar map sensor too. Yeah. Yeah, so this thing, I don't know, it had like treadstone intercooler. It has this giant like G plus oil cooler, but that and a scavenge pump coming, the scavenge pump coming off the turbo going through an oil cooler back into the, the oil really pan. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's a super weird setup. It almost looks like somebody knew how to buy parts, but they didn't know kind of really what they were doing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Dave's gonna be messing with this. That's gonna—he's gonna have his video, Junkyard Dave, on his own channel. So I'm gonna let him kind of mess with that. Um, but anyhow, I'm gonna start playing with the the Saab a little bit today, today, and actually figure out what I'm gonna do with it as far as the paint. 
Um, so as you guys know, the back bumper has all these these little little like little chingas or whatever. You can see, it has like a little bit of a dent right there. Uh, but really, one of the you guys are going to think I'm crazy. One of the main reasons I wanted a 2008 uh, Saab wagon is because of this rear bumper. And looking at that rear bumper now, you're like, oh, that's kind of lame. But they make these for them. Look at that. So it's got like a nice little diffused look to it. And uh, I don't know, pretty much ever since I've seen one of these on the internet, on one of these wagons, I was like, man, I, I want to do that. Because my wagon out here, watch, I'll show you. You can't do that to it. So if you come out here to this one, this is the 06 rear bumper, and it doesn't come up as high right here. So you can't install it on it. Which, like I said, you guys are probably going to think I'm crazy for actually that being the main reason. Not really the main reason. I do like the interiors a little bit more. They're a little bit more simplified. They don't have all of the craziness going on. It's more of a simplified interior, so there's just a radio instead of the, the thing over there. I kind of do like that thing up there. A little bit more quirky to me. Um, and then the headlights on the front end. Obviously in the last video you guys seen me kind of actually officially weld on the front end of this thing. Um, I do have the paint for this color. Uh, basically the, the hood, the bumper, and the rear bumper is kind of the plan. I don't know. Unless I should just say screw it and just paint all of it, but then that's going to be like another day. Or I should just say screw it and commit to it and just get it done. Um, yeah, I, uh, I never actually removed any of this crap, so I'm going to go ahead and try to remove some of this today. Um, and then see where we're at with it. Hi right, guys, so, uh, I don't know, I, I feel like I just get in my own damn way, like, thinking about stuff, overthinking stuff, like, I'm, I'm kind of in, in between, like, should I even, like, mess with this thing right now, or should I just, like, throw the bumper on it, you know, get the lights and everything working, and go get it salvage title inspected, give the other one to my dad, and then just drive this one how it is for a while, and just work on this guy, um, I don't know, I'm kind of stupid, so, I'm gonna do just a quick little uh, little test panel, not a panel, but uh, basically right here, you can kind of see all of the the neglect on this paint. Um, and so I'm gonna do like a quick little, not a like a color correction or anything like that, kind of a little bit. I'm basically gonna buff it, and you can see like right there where there's some uh, that adhesive on it, and I didn't quite get all of that off. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm taking this little bucket of soap and water. I have uh, some clay in here. Do a quick little clay bar. So basically clay bar this real quick and then uh, hit it with some compound on the, on the buffer. Kind of see what it does when it cleans up because looking at the car in this light, it doesn't do it any justice. Um, you know, especially for the color and all that stuff. You can also see basically going down the, the side. I mean, it just, it's just trash. I mean, it, it just doesn't look good. Um, <sighs> I don't know. The, I, I feel like my biggest issue is I, I just don't want to do it half-assed. Um, you know, because it's like, if I'm painting the bumper, I've already said it, if I'm painting the bumper, I might as well paint the hood, I might as well paint the rear bumper. If I'm doing all that, I might as well paint that door because it needs body work, and then I might as well take the dents out of the other stuff, and then I might, it's like, I might as well just paint the whole car, but, I don't know. I, I don't want to paint the car, but I do, but I don't, but I don't even know the whole color I want to do. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to try to buff this thing real quick and see what it looks like. Alright, so this is what we were able to achieve after a couple, uh, basically a couple minutes or basically just dicking around. Um, so you can definitely see the paint. It still has uh, some like minor imperfections or whatever in it. It almost looks like it was like kind of like sandblasted, like it sat in like a, a windstorm or something like that. You could see like a lot of little like chips are kind of pitting in it, which I could probably take most of that out if I actually like wet sanded the thing. Um, but I mean that right there is a hell of a lot better than that right there. Um, you can see kind of the edge where the buffer just hit it real quick. But uh, I mean it cleaned up decent. So I don't know. I mean I, like now buffing it how it is, seeing like the little bit of orange peel in it. Just painting stuff is just such a slippery slope with me, um, as you guys already know. I mean I've. Uh, I've painted enough cars, I mean, over, over the years, I think I've probably painted a total of like 20, 25 cars, something like that. Um, maybe more, maybe close, I don't know. I've painted tons of hoods and fenders and bumpers and random crap like that, though. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things that, that once I kind of start doing it, then I, I'm not, I don't want to half-ass it. I don't want to, you know, kind of dive down the rabbit hole of, of, um, I almost don't even want to start it because I just know what it's going to turn into. And that's kind of how I feel about like painting this sob right now. So, I mean, it, I don't know if, if I had a plan, if I would, if I was just like, okay, I'm going to paint it wouldn't be a big deal. And if I was like, okay, I'm not going to paint it. Wouldn't be a big deal. I just need to like decide. That's, that's my only issue is I just need to decide whether it's getting fully painted or not. We'll figure it out. So another area that I didn't really like on the car was the hood. And it was kind of in this re really weird state where it just looks like really dull. So if you look at that, that's just, I don't know. It's super weird. It almost looks like it was, it, I mean, the whole thing just looks like it's fading. Um, so then I did like a, a quick little uh, polish on it. I compounded this and then polished this and this turned out a little bit better. So you could see, actually you could see the metallic in it now. And then it's actually blue. Um, and if you go to the center right there, you could see like, I don't know, I'm assuming this hood has definitely been repainted and then they probably used uh, not as high quality of a clear coat or maybe just the fact that it's in uh, Texas and it probably seen a lot of sun and all that stuff. Um, you could still see the little bit of fading. So you could see right there where it's just kind of discolored and cloudy looking. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's definitely, an, you know, the problem issue. That's primarily the reason I, I wanted to respray the hood just because of that. Um, I still haven't decided if I'm a painter or not. All right, nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this back bumper. It uh, does need a little bit of loving on it. It did look like they backed into something right there. It's got a couple scuffs on it on the side. And then right here, which is one of the things I'm primarily concerned about. I'm trying to get it so you guys could actually see that. But there's a, uh, yep, there's a dent in it right there. Um, and I also would kind of like to test fit this, uh, this fiberglass um, little diffuser thing and see how it kind of looks on there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off and, uh, and see what I'm messing with. Okay, guys, so uh, the fitment on this little diffuser thing is like pretty bad. I don't know if I've ever really seen. I mean, it's fiberglass and it's from Poland and I mean, not saying that things from Poland are bad, but I mean, it's just, it's not the greatest thing ever. Um, I guess uh, Hirsch or High Arsh or I think it's Hirsch, <clears throat> the Saab like performance. There's a lot, they made a lot of Saab performance stuff a long time ago and I don't really think they're in business anymore, but uh, they had like an exhaust kit, I guess, and this is what came with the exhaust kit was that. And then so basically after that, everybody copied it. Uh, MapTune actually has a nice carbon fiber one that I guess fits a little bit better than this. Um, but this thing, it was like 99 bucks plus like $70 shipping. Um, so not terribly expensive, but uh, definitely a lot better than the factory one. So it's basically just in primer right now, like a black primer. I'm not going to worry about trying to make it super, super pretty or straight or like doing body work or anything to it. It does have these like little uh, fiberglass tabs right there and that's basically kind of how it holds itself in. You can see the factory one right here has, its, uh, has these little tabs that kind of hold it in and these ones they're really really stiff and they basically kind of bend down so once you get them in there they kind of hold it a little bit better um, but it's definitely a, a really really tight fit and then I didn't think the edges were gonna fit but once you actually push it up there it, it does kind of fit so I think we might be all right. Um, this back bumper is, I mean, really, really bad. It just looks like somebody just backed into stuff and basically like backed into the same thing like over and over again. Uh, this 08, um, well, basically sport combi rear bumpers in general are really rare and expensive. Um, you can't really find them or, you know, they're not really sell for sale used. Um, I think on ESOB parts, they're, if they're even available, they're kind of expensive. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull this bumper back off now that I kind of figured out that I, I will be able to get that to work eventually and just basically try to get this rear bumper ready to spray tonight. Um, I pretty much decided I'm not, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this damn Saab. The, I'm kind of all right with the way the hood is right now. And uh, so the plan is, is to basically just paint the front bumper, not do the hood, not do the fender, not do, well, the fender doesn't need anything, not do the door because the door has a little bit of stuff in it which you guys have probably heard me say that like 10 times in this video, but 
rear bumper only, front bumper only. That's it. So I'm going to do body work and probably paint that thing, whatever color I decide to do. Not color, but either if I do like a satin black out of a rattle can or if I just spray some uh, like black base coat on it with some clear. Maybe gunmetal or something. That might kind of give it like a little bit of an offset type of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start messing with that. What? So now that I have this thing sanded down, I basically just hit it with the DA with 180 grit or so. And uh, yeah, now you can kind of see some more of the imperfections in it. Uh, kind of blended a few of these out a little bit. I could probably sand them a little bit more. Um, you can see like that right there. That's where somebody backed into something. And then as you go, you could kind of see all the random spots. Um, so what I'm primarily concerned with right now is you can see like how it's shiny down in those little holes. Same thing with right there. As you go down, so what I'm basically taking is uh, this little 80 grit sandpaper and uh, kind of trying to just dig down in there, do little circles around it, and uh, just try to get, get down in the hole basically and uh, make sure that there's some nice tooth in there since that's actually where the little bit of the icing filler or whatever is gonna go down into. So you can see there's that little thing. Try to get down in there. I'll get a little bit better when I'm not on camera, but just try to make sure that it has, you know, some good good grit to to really bite into, especially in these little holes. And since the bumper does kind of flex, um, <clears throat> I do get a lot of questions about this icy stuff. I forget where to put it. Put it down somewhere. Um, and where'd it go? No, there's this one. Yeah, this is the one. It's full. Um, Sometimes when you storm like that, the, the lid pops off. But this is stuff I get at the DNS Paint Center, my local uh, paint store. Uh, you can also get it off of Amazon. And um, I think I have the link in my affiliate program in the, in the description. So be sure to check that out if you guys ever do this. Um, I gotta get, find, uh, I used to have a thing of brand new spreaders in here, which I have most of these bondo ones I'll use. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mix up a little bit of that and pour it down, not pour it down, but spread it across here and then kind of block it once it's dry. Alright guys, so uh, I'm gonna go home for the night. It's getting a little bit late. I uh, I did kind of want to get this thing sanded, and then at least in like a coat of primer. But I don't know. It seems a little bit uh, a little bit tacky. A lot of times when you put this on like really really thin like that, um, you know, it, it just doesn't kind of dry. And and I want to sand it with a, a lesser grit of a sandpaper like 180. Um, but yeah, I really wish I could have got some primer in it, but uh, I guess that's that's the way things go. But I'll come back tomorrow, try to get this thing primed early enough to where I could let it sit, and then uh, hopefully just kind of block it and then sand it in the afternoon, and then hopefully paint it, and then have this damn thing done, and and basically, yeah. So we got, the, it's been a couple hours since the, I've primed the bumper outside. So basically just, I don't know, let it sit, let it dry up a little bit. And uh, so now it's going to be time to, what do we got to do, Dave? I don't know. What do we got to do? So we got to push, uh, we got to push this guy outside. We got to push, uh, we got to push that guy outside. And then we also have to push this guy outside. So. Why do we push that one? 
This one's... I don't want to get... This one drives. Well, I guess we're not pushing them outside, but I'm pulling them outside. I mean, with their own power. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to pull them outside, and then we're going to scrap this thing, yeah? No. This is what's tied about the Mustang. There's also tied about the Mustang. I think it has a under it. It almost looks like everything leaks when you park it at right that there. at that incline, yeah. Tight. So we're climbing this beast. I think this thing's pretty much sat here since before I went to Texas. I haven't sanded it yet. I still need to sand the front bumper too. Or scuff it. But other than that, I'm other than that, I'm ready to paint. Yeah, Alright guys, so I got this uh, this guide coat right here. And uh basically just do a little little dusting on here. There's plenty of guide coat on the There's plenty of guide coat. On the, the Supra. So I think I'm pretty much ready to spray. I got my uh, random lights all around the shop. Got the super covered up, bikes covered up. And uh, yeah, I went ahead and I scuffed this rear rear guy. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with some black and just clear coat it. And so it'll be nice and glossy black. I stuck a box under here so that it wasn't so floppy. Um, but yeah, that thing looks pretty good. Hopefully the, the, the color actually covers well. So I know this is a lighter color. I should almost be like hitting this with like a darker color. Um, you know, maybe like a black or something like that in order to, to lay the base down. So that might be an option. I was going to see how it covers at first before I put the black on that. And if it doesn't cover very well after maybe like one or two coats, um, maybe I'll just spray it black and then go over that. Because I know this thing is going to be, it should cover all right over it. But uh yeah, I still need to do give everything kind of a final wipe down. Uh, I basically just kind of wet down the the shop in here, kind of cleaned it all out or swept it really well, and then um, just wet it down. So, yeah, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and start loading some uh, paint in the gun after I get it wiped down.
right, so they're, uh, they're painted one coat of clear. Um, probably put another coat of clear on here. Kind of bury a couple of those. A couple of little dirt, dirt specks in it, but uh, with a second coat of clear, it should should bury them pretty nicely. So, yeah, everything seems like it turned out. Turned out alright. Got a little bit of stuff in there, but I mean, this should lay out nice. I mean, if we're straight out of the gun, you could read my t-shirt. Which one to be like, ah! Yeah, I decided on this rear uh, diffuser thing to go ahead and just put a line on it so you could see it's like this is the blue of the car and then that's just black. So I figured that would look well actually David suggested that because I initially was just gonna paint it all black. And then he's like, well, maybe just paint this color of the car and then paint that black since that's kind of what they look like. But damn, I mean that clear. Should laid out pretty good. The clear coat I'm using for uh all this stuff is this uh Omni, it's like MC270, it's a production clear. Um, it's like Omni's version of uh, the Deltron stuff, which is, I don't know, should last all right. Should probably like five, six years before it'll fade. Maybe 10 years, I don't know. Never kept nothing long enough to kind of do that. But yeah, I'm happy with it for now. Especially with, uh, with how this rear bumper looked. If you guys remember, the beginning of this uh, this video, seeing had a bunch of little ripples in it and a little dance and all kinds of crap, and now there's some that's straight. It's really straight, so hopefully it matches. Hopefully it matches the car. Well, I guess that uh, wraps up my painting adventure for uh, this night or this week or or however long this was. Uh, basically. I don't know. I, I basically spent the first like two days of this week like dicking around with this thing. Like not really even knowing what, what I wanted to do with it at all. And uh, you know part of me just wanted to respray the whole thing. You know like I've explained before I, I was just going to get into like that. I was just going to fall down the slippery slope of like painting something. Um, I mean it, it's still not, not you know where I want it to be obviously but it's uh, you know kind of what I would consider good enough to drive. Maybe one of these days I'll get bored and just kind of throw some uh, some filler in here and just like mask that off and just do this in like a black primer or something for the meantime. The roof doesn't bother me a whole lot. Um, the hood isn't that bad right now. I think once I, uh, you know, do a little polish and a little bit of wax on the car, it'll clean up and look pretty decent. Um, like I said, I mean, pretty much, I don't know, we, I've already said it. The whole thing needs basically painted if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna go down that hole. So I figured this was the simplest solution, basically just paint the bumpers, paint that little diffuser, put it in there and just drive it. Um, I mean, pretty much all my other sobs, they all have had random, you know, little issues with them. They've never been perfect. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, now just isn't the time for me to, to be spending on this thing. I've already spent too much time on this uh, in general. Um, I mean, for the amount of time I spent on this, I could have, like with the, the other Supra, you know, the, the daily Supra or whatever, I mean, I could have put a single turbo on it and convert it to a manual transmission and, you know, I mean, all that stuff for the amount of time that I've spent working on this damn thing and I could have been driving a super around instead of this. I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm stupid for, for even messing with this thing right now. And then, you know, with the, I don't know, something, something about recently, just like the whole like super comments, you know, about me not actually working on it. I don't know. They've been kind of getting to me a little bit. Um, probably more than they should have and I almost feel like you know every every time I upload something that's not the super I feel like I just get like crucified by like a certain group of people you know about not working on it which I, I know I, I need to work on it but uh, you know, it just hasn't been you know necessarily like I don't know the, I'm just really discouraged because of the paint and then uh, you know another reason I kind of wanted to paint some of the stuff in the shop uh, again I know I didn't go like super, super crazy in, in, in to see um, as far as like masking everything off, like masking the walls off or draping curtains basically. Um, so I didn't really do that, but I mean there is some stuff in uh, in here, but it, I feel like it's definitely not as big as 
some of the other things that got in that in the paint booth. So I don't know, I almost feel like I could get a better job painting in here if I actually really, really cared about it. The other thing is, is I thought, uh, thought about trying to get like an actual, one of those like blow up paint booths, but I've heard the ventilation really sucks. Um, currently talking with a company trying to see if, uh, if maybe we could work a deal on, on one. Um, I think that'd be pretty sweet, but uh, I don't know. This stuff turned out all right, but uh, I guess uh, the sob's coming together. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let this stuff sit overnight and I'll come back tomorrow and kind of button it all up. Hopefully get, you know, the, the wheel arches and everything in here, get this thing all buttoned up and then actually get it, uh, you know, salvage title inspection so that I could basically give my dad the other one, start driving this one, and then uh, after that I'm free and clear to, to work on basically the bikes. Probably work on the bikes. No, probably not that. They're they're pretty good. All of them run. So, yeah, I do need to do some maintenance stuff to this before the drift season. Um, since the Mustang, I don't think I'm going to be like, you know, doing that as fast as I thought I was initially going to. Um, yeah. So, I need to go ahead and uh, I don't know, figure out exactly what's happening with the Mustang for now. I almost thought about dailying that. I should have just pushed this thing outside, but it was already so close. I don't know, I, I, have, I have too many things in my head. I'm like too indecisive and I have commitment issues when it comes to projects. Um, you guys have already known that by now and I guess that's why most of you guys have subscribed. I am super stoked on this damn, uh, like this whole paint setup over here, like this little paint station I got. Cause it's like after I'm done, I can just put everything away, close the doors, everything pretty much has a spot. Well, this doesn't go there, but uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much everything has a spot um, as far as all my painting equipment, and uh, I know it's already kind of dirty, but uh, I'm rambling. Appreciate you guys watching. If uh, if you stayed this long, you guys probably liked the video, so be sure to remember to give it a thumbs up. Um, if you do want to, if you haven't been seeing my videos lately, uh, hit that notification bell, and uh, if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. If you like sob things, but. Uh, I am gonna get to this, but I'm, I'm, I'm really discouraged on the paint, and I don't want it to happen again, so I'm not sure where to paint it, like here or not, or, I don't know, because if, if I basically paint it and have those little issues happen again, I'm just gonna be like, ah. See you guys later.